Violin Music by Becca Greenouch On October 27, 1838, Governor Boggs issued the extermination order. The order said that Mormons must be driven from the state. But did it give Missouri residents a license to kill Mormons? Dr. Alex Baugh from BYU will answer that question, and we're going to tackle some other interesting myths about the extermination order. You're not going to want to miss this episode. Check it out. And so we're into October now. Into October. And so Lyman White is leading some Danites that are burning some Missouri villages yep. and, and things like that as retaliation for all the previous persecution. Yeah, I think that's a right, good way to say it. It's retaliation for all that's been going on and then, then picking on us. Okay, and so then three Mormons are captured. We have this battle. Boggs gets news that... Missourians have been massacred, yeah. and then he issues the the, the extermination order. Now, I, again, I do argue, and I I think I've I demonstrated this in, in in enough writings to most people would agree. I, I would think they would that this was not meant to be a killing order. This was a removal order. Which, which order? The, no, I'm sorry. The, you talk, the bogs or the yeah or the, the, the yeah the the uh, eight, October twenty seventh, eighteen thirty eight. We call it the extermination order, right. but Boggs is not saying go out and kill every Mormon. Okay, That's not legal. Uh, these are American citizens. These are Missouri citizens. What he's saying is uh, the Mormons must be exterminated, and then he says, or in other words, driven, driven from, from the, the state. state. I, I think it's very clear that he, he's basically saying, let's tell them they've got to get out. Now, that order was unclear to some people. I'll be honest with you. I think that I think that we can safely say do you, that. Do you think that some Missourians took that as license to kill? No. No? Not really. I think it confused them. And Donovan and others who, when they read the order, kind of wondered, what's he doing? But I think they realized he's not saying go kill all the Mormons. He's saying he's just saying get out of the state. Get them out of the state. Now, if they don't go, then we have, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take more decisive action. But Boggs is not a killer. What, what, now, that Mormons might hate that statement. Um, he, he's a Christian man. He has ten children. I mean, he's, but he's a politician for crying out loud, and he he's going to appease his own Missourians, not the Mormons. Mm -hmm. uh, he's had it with them. He's been dealing with us since uh, Jackson County because he lived in Jackson County. Uh, he didn't like us there as much as anybody, <laughs> and and we just seem to keep having problems with us. So he's saying it's time. It, states' rights. He can do what he wants. Get him out of here. Let somebody else deal with him. Uh, and if you read, uh, Rick, an 1828 dictionary, Webster's Dictionary, the first dictionary in the United States, the first uh, definition of exterminate is to remove from within one's borders. So clearly, Rigdon's was, you know, exterminate that we would kind of associate it with today. But Boggs, I think you, you read his, uh, if you read carefully his thing, he's saying they must be driven to the state. Now, if they don't go, then we can we can have forceful action against them. I mean, we, we may have to, we, we may have to take stricter measures. But the, he's not saying go kill a Mormon. Okay. And, and or go kill all the Mormons. And, and I think Donovan and others realized that, that that's, that's, what the order stood for. So let's let's get him to surrender, get him to leave, and then uh, hopefully this will. And in fact, later uh, when he talks to the Missouri legislature, uh, when was it? 1840, uh, 39, 40. Anyway, he says I issued the extermination order to prevent the effusion of blood. I, I don't want people killed. I want them removed so we don't have to do more extreme measures. So I. I I'm just absolutely convinced that's, and, and yet so many Latter-day Saints think that the extermination order was a legal order to kill. And well, let me tell you something because I I, I, I was in uh, Kansas City in June, um, and uh, grading AP statistics exams, <laughs> and uh, my room I had a roommate, and he he actually grew up in Missouri, and he he mentioned something about Missouri, and I and I and I. I was like, oh, Liberty, he mentioned Liberty. I'm like, oh, I want to go to Liberty. And he's like, what do you want to know about Liberty? And I'm like, well, Liberty Jail and Joseph yeah. Smith. And then he, he said to me, you know, it was once legal to kill a Mormon in yep. Missouri. Uh, I, I've heard that <laughs> for so many years. I just, I, I, it just makes me ill. Um, 
again. So there's non-Mormons that believe yeah. this too. And then but. they say, okay, in 1976, Governor Christopher Bond issued the rescinding order of, of uh, the, the, the extermination order. By the way, that was given at Stewartsville, Missouri, during one of the RLDS reunions. A lot of, lot of Latter-day Saints think he was doing it for us, meaning the Utah-based oh. church. Uh, he realized, I mean, the Community of Christ Reorganized Church are headquartered in Missouri, for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. uh, and he came there to present that to, was it Wallace Smith, I guess? It, yeah, I, I think it was. Uh, and, uh, and he did that as a gest, you know, a, a token political gesture, I guess you might say, to say, that book, that, that order is terrible, let's remove it. And so that was more for the community of Christ. Than well, I think I think it was us as well. I mean, after okay. all, we were we have roots there too. But it was, it wasn't given to our church leaders or to President Kimball or whoever. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah, that. Part. So it was their reunion, and I think a lot of Latter Day Saints say, "Oh yeah, until 1976, it was legal to kill a Mormon." That is so far wrong uh, that you it just it's unimaginable. And yet Mormons, Latter Day Saints, think. You know, if I say something like that, that I'm pro bogs or something. No, uh, he he made so many political missteps in regards to Latter Day Saints. It's it, it, it. You just kind of wonder. But he was a politician. He was mm -hmm. a politician, and he's he's trying to, to 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 keep with his political base. You know, and he was an only one term governor. I mean, he there's no way he's going to uh, win in 1840, um, and he knows it. And all the, uh, the uh, Missouri it was politically divided. The West was, Western Missouri is so different than St. Louis area. And he's from the West. And uh, uh, there, there's no way he could have gotten reelected. There's no way. Uh, but he did try to account for his actions to the Missouri legislature. But he said, I didn't do it to, to kill him. I, I, meant, I meant to trop, try to stop any more uh, uh, activities that might cause bloodshed. So. Hmm. Um, but anyway, so back to the, uh, we have the three Mormons killed, uh, including Patton, and the message meant, sent to the governor that, and see if he would have come out there and just checked things out and told everybody, come on, let's get along. Uh, I think th things could have turned out a lot differently. But um, he gets this misreport and he says we must uh, drive them from the state. So. Uh, meanwhile, militia from all over the state is being called to northern Missouri now. Uh, what's interesting is the commander who's supposed to carry out this order is none other than guess who? Atchison. Atchison. And he knows Atchison is, he's, it, Atchison's not pro-Mormon, but he's sympathetic. Mm -hmm. And Donovan's been his law partner uh, earlier, and they're good buddies, even though they're politically different. Donovan was a Whig, Atchison was a Democrat. Oh, okay. Uh, but the point is, uh, uh, Boggs immediately removes Atchison from command. And so Atchison has to go home. Oh, really? And he calls a guy by the name of John B. Clark from Howard County, a general there, to go up and supervise the uh, surrender and removal of the Mormons. In the meantime, now Donovan, I'm trying to get my, uh, my one's a political uh, brigadier general, one's a major general. I get them mixed up as to which was the higher, but, uh, but Donovan's a sub-general to uh, Atchison. But um, the one who held the same rank as Atchison, but not the Supreme Commander of the 53rd Regiment, I think it was, was none other than Samuel Lucas from Jackson County. And he's going, okay, Clark's not here yet. I'm the guy in charge. I have the most m military authority. So he's the one that actually says, let's go after Joseph Smith right now. And let's go get him. And they do. And of course, by this time, Joseph has heard about uh, Hans Mill. Uh, and I can come back to that. And um, uh, Lucas says, we've got to get Joseph Smith. He, of course, goes after several other leaders. Uh, Joseph, Hiram Sidney, the first presidency. Lyman White probably should have got him. This guy was doing some things that he shouldn't have done up there in Davies County. There's just no question. Okay. Uh, but anyway, they'll arrest uh, six, seven prisoners. And this is where, of course, Lucas says, why don't we just have a military tribunal and 
court martial these guys and shoot them. And uh, this is when Donovan steps up and says, you can't do that. Uh, Joseph Smith is a civilian. He's not even had, he doesn't have any uh, militia authority, and he didn't. Now, Lyman White did. Uh, that's, a, that's an exception there. But um, that's when Lucas says, well, I don't know what to do with them. Maybe I, and Clark's not here. Maybe I'll take them down to Independence. So that's when he arrests them. Uh, they have the court martial, but Donovan refuses to shoot him and says, you can't shoot him. And if you do, I'll hold you responsible. Well, I'm, that, an, that I'm an attorney. The, that was in the primary lesson. I remember <laughs> yeah, that part. Yeah. I'll hold you responsible before an earthly tribunal, so help me God. So um, Lucas goes, he has to back down. And Donovan will, you know, he'll, he'll take him to the cleaners. And Donovan's our attorney. And so that's when Lucas takes him down to independence. He waits for John Clark to come to uh, finalize the surrender in, at Far West, and then Clark says, okay, we got to take him for a hearing over in Richmond. Now, that's jumping way ahead of the, the game, but did you want to talk about Hans Mill? Yeah, because well, we got to figure out where that is. Okay, so uh, I'll but, just... But really quickly, before we go there, so this is when Joseph gets sent to Liberty Jail? Is that is No, that he's get, he actually is taken down to Independence. He's there from uh, November 4th to the 8th, and then on the 8th, uh, Lucas receives word he's supposed to take him over to Richmond, Okay. They get over there on the 9th, and from the 9th to about the 30th, they're going to have a preliminary hearing in Richmond under the auspices of uh, Austin King, who is the circuit judge there. And during that hearing, they, they found probable cause against Joseph Smith and the Latter-day Saints there because that uh, part of the charge is treason. When they were up in... Uh, Davies County, they burned Jacob Stolling store. Jacob Stolling store uh, also had a post office. And so they burned a federal oh, installation. So that made it a yeah. lot worse. But I think they're really charging them with treason against the state of Missouri, which may or may not be legal, and that's a whole other story. But treason, nonetheless, is non-bailable. Okay. So you can't post bail and say, I'm going to show up for my hearing. So what... what um, uh, Luke, or excuse me, what um, Austin King is doing is holding Joseph and the Mormon prisoners in prison uh, throughout the winter. Now, they do set a hearing date for March. Later, it was moved to April. Uh, but they're going to have this, they're going to hold them there to make sure the Mormons go out of the state. Once they leave the state, uh, they'll have this little you know, token hearing up in Gallatin, and then the, then the Mormon prisoners are let go. They never go after any any Missourian who committed depredations again. They never do. They mm -hmm. just come after the Mormons. Well, I think uh, to to Boggs and others, uh, the judges showed the Mormons are leaving. They they need to be they need to be let let go. So uh, they have a, pr a little hearing up there in Gallatin. They can't ha hold a hearing up there for two reasons. Number one. Uh, they ch asked for a change of venue. These guys are so upset, uh, the Mormons, because of what they did to them. They would never got a fair hearing up there. And the, some of the people, of course, that had those things take place against them were, were part of the jury. Mm -hmm. And then the other reason is John Birch. No, not John Birch. No, oh, that sounded bad. Um, <laughs> Thomas Birch. I think it was Thomas Birch. Okay. B-I-R-C-H or B-U-R-C-H. Anyway, uh, he had been the prosecuting attorney, uh, been part of the prosecution down at Richmond when they had the preliminary hearing. So he's got a conflict of interest here. He can't hear that preliminary hearing and now be the final judge at, the, at Gallatin. So uh, he orders for them to have this change of venue to uh, uh, Columbia Boone County Jail. And uh, uh, while they're in uh, Cheriton County, the, the guards say, hey, you know, we were told to let you guys go. We're going to drink some grog and you guys, uh, you need a horse. The Joseph negotiates for a horse, or maybe it was two horses. Um, and then uh, they said, we're going to go to bed and you guys get out of town, you know, get out of here. So, uh, and then they made their way to, to, to Quincy. So that's, the kind, that's kind of the long end of things. But I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Alex Ba. In our next conversation, we're going to tackle the Hans Mill Massacre. This occurred just three days after the extermination order was signed. Were local mobs in Missouri aware of this order? They had not heard of the extermination order or the October. Oh, well, they had not. No. And this is what I think every, they didn't even hear about it until the day after it happened. In fact, I will argue, Rick, 
that had they heard the governor was going to ask for the expulsion of the Mormons or demand the expulsion of the Mormons, that might have even saved them. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please support Gospel Tangents and become a subscriber. For just $5 a month, go to uh, patreon.com slash gospel tangents and you can hear the entire interview. And you can also get uh, transcripts available at either our Amazon website or if you want to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website at gospeltangents.com and you can click the yellow subscribe button. Of course, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other places. Uh, make sure you subscribe on iTunes at tinyurl.com slash gospel tangents. And don't forget to click here to subscribe on YouTube here for a transcript. And over here, we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again for listening.